President Cyril Ramaphosa says South Africa has sent SANDF troops to Palma in Mozambique. This follows a terrorist attack in the coastal town that left dozens dead, including a South African. SABC News reporter Natasha Piri asked the president about his thoughts on the insurgency in the neighboring country. Well, we are attending to the matter uh, on an ongoing basis. We are briefed and uh, we have already uh, attended to the issue of evacuating those South Africans who are stranded in Mozambique and already one of those who passed away, the South African National Defense Force has brought them back and we remain involved with securing the safety of our people in Mozambique, in uh, Pemba and in Palma. So the South African National Defense Force is working very hard to secure the safety of South Africans. Military operations continue in Palma following that attack that killed thousands and uprooted thousands. Portugal is also reportedly ready to send 60 soldiers to help train, train armed forces in uh, Cabo Delgado. Meanwhile, a boat carrying survivors from Palma arrived in the port city of Pemba yesterday. A boat carrying more than a thousand survivors of a deadly attack by Islamic State-linked insurgents in northern Mozambique arrived in the port of Pemba on Thursday. Many of them distraught, as were the crowds of relatives waiting for their loved ones. Aid workers waited to give survivors food, and police and soldiers kept order. The government says dozens were killed in the highly organized attack on the gas town of Palma, which began last Wednesday. Mariamo Tagir was among many who fled and walked for days through the forest. I'm so tired. It was seven days in the bush. I'm so tired. We came across evildoers several times. The situation is really bad. There are many dead. Many dead. <laughs> Survivors have spoken of bodies in the streets, some decapitated. Aid groups believe the attack displaced tens of thousands of people, many of whom fled into dense forest or attempted to escape by sea. Hundreds, including many foreign workers, have been evacuated by air. Islamist insurgents have been increasingly active in the surrounding province of Cabo Delgado since 2017, although it is unclear what specifically they are fighting for. The district around Palma is home to natural gas projects worth $60 billion. A diplomatic source said there were roughly 1,200 displaced people on board the boat, including 300 children and 400 women. An official at the International Committee of the Red Cross said the government was screening those arriving at Pemba to prevent infiltration by armed groups. Now let's get the latest from Mozambique. We joined via Zoom by Yasmin Opperman is an analyst with the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project. Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon and good afternoon to your viewers. Mm -hmm. South Africa has sent troops to Mozambique following uh, this attack and of course uh, so many lives have been at risk and we lost a South mm. African as we reported last week on this. Uh, do you think uh, this is the right timing or this is little too late? Too little too late? Uh, we've been saying for quite a while South Africa can, cannot ignore Cabo Delgado. The frustrating part is Palma should never have happened. I've said that numerous times now. Um, South Africa has a responsibility towards its citizens. The question, though, is, and most likely we're talking about secure, uh, um, specialized forces going in, if they are going to move in, how are they going to move in, and do they have the intelligence at hand on where these South Africans are? For if they are not going to have that intelligence to deploy blindly in Palma and surrounding areas will be a suicide mission. We need to be precise and uh, according to my understanding, this is still in a planning phase and no actual deployments have taken place as yet, though I have not, that was communicated the last with me. Mm -hmm. You're raising a very important issue here in as far as the approach to which the 
troops are going to arrive? I mean, like if there's an ongoing battle, one would have already strategized in terms of the troops on the ground, how you're going to attack in case uh, there's a need to do that from the air. And, of course, the Navy as well. And, of course, we hear that normally when situations are like this, uh, they cannot reveal their intelligence approach. It is so important, and I think this is what we need to understand. There is no one in control in, uh, at Palma or surrounding areas. Clearance operations are encountering serious counterpunch from the insurgents where they simply assemble in small groups and execute attacks. Um, so though some of the insurgents could have withdrawn, the situation is extremely volatile and Mozambique government security forces are not in a position to counter. And with a dike advisory group uh, contract that has ended, uh, one do not even know if chopper support and the eye in the sky as protection will be available to South African soldiers. So the situation is extremely, extremely um, high risk even for specialized forces to move in. Mm. What's your interpretation of how uh, both SADC and the African Union handled the situation so far? Any strong condemnation uh, from them? Uh, again, two statements. And uh, I'm saying this, and I understand statements are, well, are taken for what it is, it needs to be done. But if I look at SADC's law, statement and I read the last two paragraphs, it is clear that they are going to leave uh, or to ask the Mozambican government to take lead, for it is a sovereign state, which is understandable. Uh, and the question to go back to the Mozambican government. Are you willing to open the door for international regional coordinated um, deployments to counter the insurgents? For we don't have time anymore. We don't have time to sit around and discussing. We need action. The insurgents' momentum is escalating at a rate beyond belief, and we need to understand that. And the region cannot stand back and say, this is not our problem. What is um, a question and answered is why the Mozambican government is so reluctant to admit to the serious impact and the seriousness of a conflict. President Newsy's most recent statement again underplayed the, the impact of Palma, maintaining a winning narrative, which is not the case. Uh, I mean, whilst the attacks were taking place in Palma, we had attacks in Makoju and Pataraj. So you can see how the insurgents are spread. The situation is serious, but we need that recognition from the Mozambican government urgently. So if ISIS was once regarded as an international threat, especially even on the African continent, do you think uh, there's the there's a lackluster approach towards dealing with them. And, and also, you remember that there were reports that there were even South Africans who were willing to go and fight alongside uh, this terrorist uh, organization. I think there are two, uh, two aspects we need to understand. One, the South Africans getting involved. There is so little information available on this. And I think the people that have published this and the people that have made these serious statements, and they are serious, need to be called to the table and put the detail on the table. For that reflects a recruitment strategy in South Africa for Alsuna, which I have not yet seen at play. Uh, Twelve insurgents in the attack involved. I don't know how first and foremost they've identified them. In terms of the Islamic State, uh, the U.S. designation has added fuel to fire. I'm not saying they did not have intelligence, but the timing of the statement was wrong. It gave the insurgents a status. It invited the Islamic State propaganda machine, as we have seen with the claim to credit and the official propaganda magazine Al Naba, uh, the last one published, to climb in with renewed energy and hijack the narrative that this is part of the Islamic State um, in action after the fall of the Caliphate. And we have seen um, in the rest of Africa where there are foreign interests and foreign agendas at play, Sahel, Nigeria, Somalia, DRC, we can mention them. Uh, 
uh, they do start negating counter-terrorism actions and strategies. And we have to be careful not to overplay the Islamic State's presence within the insurgents, but not to deny that they have their eye on Cabo Delgado. And the one thing they want is time, time to imprint the extremist narrative within the local insurgency. And sadly, the way the region is responding, the Mozambican government is responding, uh, the delayed actions is giving the Islamic State exactly what they want, time and oxygen to the insurgency. And what? you've just seen who pays the price, civilians. What in for, what's in it for, for ISIS? Uh, repeat the question, please. Well, what's in it for ISIS in as far as this insurgency is concerned? What do they want? For ISIS, the message is very simple. We must keep in mind, yes, they were not defeated uh, at, when the caliphate imploded. They were seen as the leading terror organization, the extremist jihadist at a fight against the West. Since the implosion and change in leadership, they are following a far more Al-Qaeda strategy whereby the local instability and local context and where you have a violent trajectory, not chaos, an insurgency that is taking place, they will focus on this and they will try it in an opportunistic manner, which is typical to terrorism, will try to hijack and to show to its supporters that they ha are not even close to defeated, that they are active and action, that their voice is spreading as far as southern Africa. The propaganda value in terms of global expansion is of critical value to IS, uh, Islamic State, um, at this point in time, mm -hmm. as an international terror organization. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so then if they want to have an escalation of these attacks, uh, perhaps it may be looking like it's strategic from their point of view. Will there be any spillover effects on, into South Africa as well and uh, the other neighboring countries? Tanzania has already proven its vulnerability. We've seen it, but there's a historical context we need to take into account. But... Uh, the border area completely vulnerable and we are seeing now with people fleeing trying to flee to Tanzania but if we're talking about the Islamic State um, we must keep in mind that state borders do not mean anything to them for them it is expansion in terms of creating a global caliphate according to their interpretation so when you have people in the region start viewing the insurgency as an Islamic State-led insurgency, you will have loyalties, not so much because of Cabo Delgado, but because of the Islamic State voice at play. And we can have, and we can see recruitment picking up, financial support picking up, and God forbid, a lone uh, person out there deciding to take action against the government on home soil or civilians or foreigners on home soil. So yes, it increases our vulnerability. But surely, surely our intelligence services, our security services should be informed about this. And surely they must and should be able to guarantee security on home soil in the region. Because we cannot allow a foreign terror organization to direct our policies and actions. Yeah, you know, like uh, the entry point uh, when you were answering the question was uh, the no, no borders at the moment. And this begs the question now, uh, whether or not our porous borders uh, should be something that we, we should worry about, especially just, uh, you know, uh, here in, uh, you know, Bait Bridge, uh, there are people who are able to just walk through into South Africa. This actually is a very sensitive issue and it needs uh, further analysis, but we thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much to uh, Yasmin there, uh, giving us a perspective on the crisis uh, that is imminent in uh, Mozambique.